Then let's look at what can be done. The court can say, upon findings described, the court shall issue an extreme risk protection order prohibiting the respondent from having in the respondent's custody or control owning, purchasing, possessing, or receiving, or attempting to purchase or receive a deadly weapon. You can't own a deadly weapon. Now, of course, it begs the question, what if the weapons you own or the firearms you own are 3,000 miles away? Well, then we all just go, well, that certainly isn't the case, or trust our judges. But in the end, we're passing a law today that gives legal authority to an order to say to somebody, a citizen of Oregon, that you cannot own a firearm, a knife, a samurai sword, an antique bayonet. I, if you're deemed to be a risk in the near future to somebody, to the respondent, I assume, or to the petitioner. Again, vague language. We're de depriving people of ownership. Then if they're served a notice, it says you must within 24 hours surrender all deadly weapons. I got to ask the question, if someone really is suicidal, why, I mean, 24 hours, that's a day. And then it goes on and says, well, if the law enforcement officer who shows up to take the weapons, the law enforcement officer can search. If you look at page 9, it says here that when a law enforcement, an officer may conduct any search permitted by law for deadly weapons in the custody, control, possession of the respondent, and shall take possession of all deadly weapons appearing in the custody control possession of the respondent that are surrendered in plain sight or discovered pursuant to a lawful search. If the law enforcement officer knocks on your door or the respondent's door, serves the extremist protection order, looks down and looks over into the kitchen and sees one of those knife sets, is that law enforcement Enforcement officer, it's in plain sight, is, are, are they supposed to take those knives? Do they enter your home without a warrant? Are we authorizing entering homes without warrants? Because that's what this says. Now it says it has to be a lawful search. But the question then becomes a search permitted by law. A search, do they have authority to do it? It's not that they lack authority to do it. The question is, what restraint do they have? But if they're ordered to seize weapons that are in plain sight, the question is, what do they see? Excuse me, Representative. Representative Parrish yields her time. Please continue. I'm nervous about that. I'm nervous about putting our law enforcement officers in that position. We can certainly say here today, and maybe proponents of the bill may say, look, that's not what's intended. No, they can't enter a home without a search warrant. <laughs> I invite you to read this section on page nine, section six. I go back to what happens when this is issued and 24 hours are served. If this order is upheld, it's good for a year. And only one time during that year can the respondent seek to have it overturned. And when the respondent seeks to have it overturned, in section four, the burden of proof is on the respondent. 